Well, how nice it is to have you back with us on a Wednesday gathering. It is such a good time when we get together midweek and get a chance just to share the word. And today we're going to be looking at 2 Timothy and Strong to the Finish is the series that we're in. What a great thing when we're going through such tough times here in America to be strong to the finish. I love what Paul tells us in chapter 4 of 2 Timothy. It's such a great read and has such pertinent information for us. Well, today we're going to be looking at preaching is a big deal. And think about this. Paul was trying to help Timothy, his mentee, get ready for taking over from him and be aware of the kinds of traps and challenges and uh, things that they go through as a minister and preaching is a big deal. Uh, I can remember when I was uh, 22 years old, recently married, my wife Dot, her father was a pastor preacher in Pennsylvania, and he invited me to share the pulpit one Sunday when we were visiting from California. Uh, it's interesting, you know, a, a young, energetic, uh, thought I was a good speaker kind of guy, and I said, hey, yeah, sure, I'm happy to do that. I wasn't a preacher at the time, a minister, or other than, uh, you know, we always are all ministers all the time, but not in a professional sense. And so, sure, I said yes. And it's interesting, uh, you have this energy or this sense that uh, you can do just about anything and it'll all work out, but, you know, preaching is a big deal and it really takes a lot of effort and timing and God's presence and things. And, and I thought I was better than I was at the time. Uh, interesting how God takes a young man who is willing to do something, but helps turn the words into powerful words, no matter how unpowerful they were coming from me. Uh, but I'll never, rem never forget that. And it's always fun to think about that time because now I get a chance to preach the word in a whole different setting. Well, let's take a look at first, uh, excuse me, Second Timothy chapter four. Uh, interesting time when you think about this. The idea is that Paul was giving solemn testimony to Timothy, testimony that Timothy must heed if he is to become a godly pastor. So. Uh, how do pastors become godly? You, you can be a good speaker and not necessarily a good pastor, a good preacher, uh, but Timothy is getting instruction from one of the best, and that's Paul. So uh, in the Greek, the, the word charge means to testify under oath. So in a sense, the solemnity of what Paul is saying is strong. Timothy, I'm telling you this, and I'm telling you it with an urgency and a sense of purpose and power so that you will be the godly preacher that I know you can be and that God wants. Um, as Paul sat, and remember he was in a cold, damp prison cell, uh, he understood that there was a spiritual reality present that went beyond the walls of his cell. So he's writing this letter to his good mentee friend, Timothy, to help him become who God wanted him to become. Even in prison, Paul had this strong sense of the second coming of Christ and that uh, he didn't know when, as none of us do, but he had a, a strong purpose that, and a belief that Jesus is coming back and it could be before he died, it, it, before Paul died, but it may not be. And so going through all of these things, sharing with, with Timothy a lot that will help Timothy become a godly preacher. So what does a testimony mean? Well, in Paul's case, the testimony was actually preach the word. That was his testimony uh, to Timothy. You've got to preach the word and the word itself is so powerful. Preaching the word uh, in season and out of season. When you think about it, uh, how important it is that what it means and what Paul was saying to Timothy, you don't have a Sunday only time to preach but you preach the word all the time. And that's what he wanted Timothy do, to do, just like Paul had done. 
in season and out, and you have to be prepared to convince, to rebuke, to uh, uh, exhort, to uh, do all of those things in a long-suffering way and teaching as you're preaching. Uh, Paul's emphasis on the Word of God has been constant throughout his ministry as we've seen through his writings. There are some 36 references to the true gospel in this letter and some 17 references to false teaching. So what he's trying to do to prepare Timothy is to say, okay, there are so many truths, make sure you stay on that side of the page. Don't get caught up in the 17 or so examples of false teaching. That was really, really critical. So the constant emphasis makes Paul's point really clear to Timothy. Don't be ashamed of the testimony. And we find that in 2 Timothy 1.8, hold fast to the pattern of sound words. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, 1.13 tells us that. And as we look and see what's going on in the scripture, the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men. In other words, I'm not just preparing you to be a preacher, but I'm wanting you to be prepared to prepare others to be a preacher. Rightly divide the word of God. In other words, make sure you stay on the truth side, not on the false side of things and making stuff up yourself. Uh, a servant of the Lord must be able to teach. So you preach and teach. They go hand in hand. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God. These are lessons that Paul is sharing in a very personal testimony. You have to remember that this is a personal letter to Timothy, it's not to the churches like Ephesus or uh, Thessalonica or one of those. This is a personal letter to his mentee, Timothy. And so it carries a different kind of weight in how he talks to him. And he knows that his own time on earth is short and there's a strong desire to leave Timothy with a powerful word of direction. So Timothy would be a powerful ambassador or preacher for the Lord. As a pastor, Timothy was required, not required to merely know the word or like the word or approve of the word. He was required to preach the word. Not everyone who opens a Bible and starts talking is preaching the word. Uh, many well-intentioned preachers actually are preaching themselves instead of the word. And what do I mean by that? Well, if the focus is on the funny stories or on the, the touching life experiences of the preacher, they may be preaching themselves and not preaching the word. Now, there's nothing wrong with good anecdotes and stories that help uh, emphasize and, and help us have clarity as to what is the meaning of the word is, but we have to keep our focus firmly on preaching the word, the gospel. And it's interesting how that works. Uh, while some people may chafe at it, the word always gets through because it doesn't return void. You see, when, when God's word is shared, is preached, it goes, if it goes to the hearers of the word and their, their ears are open, it's amazing what the word given by a preacher, how God uses it when the hearer hears it. Uh, I love what happens with that. So his hope was that Timothy would be encouraged and would encourage the next generation and the next generation after that would encourage the next generation and so on to be the kind of preacher that Paul had been. And look where he had been throughout the world, all over the known world at the time. And he had been to city after city, establishing churches, preaching the gospel and sharing with those who would hear. So you have to be ready in season and out of season. So it's, it's interesting. Uh, what does that mean in season and out of season? Well, it means very simply, Preach the word now, wherever you are, all the time. It's not, okay, we preach on Sundays only, or we preach on Wednesdays only, but you preach the word all the time. Everything we do is preaching the word. You should preach when it's easy. Preach when it's hard. You should preach when it's a, the fruit is evident. You know you're going to gain people into the kingdom and preach when you don't know whether that's going to happen or not. Uh, there is such an important need to preach the word of God. And in this particular time we live right now, there's nothing more powerful than the word of God. So when we have some hopelessness, some despair, some uh, questioning about what's going on in our country, there's nothing better than to hear the word of God and hear the truth from a preacher. 
I love that concept. So I got to be ready in season and out. There's no substitute for the truth of the Bible, no matter what's going on around us. Paul tells Timothy to convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. In his preaching, Timothy was to bring the word of God to bear on the lives of his people. So uh, how does it impact each of us? So we're to hear it in a certain way that the preacher delivers it so that we hear the truth, we apply it to our living and how we actually go about living this life that we're in. He was not to treat the word as if it was filled with interesting ideas and fascinating theories. He was told to uphold the word of God against the lives of his people and then let God do his work in that. And how powerful it is when we certainly understand that we need to let God's word get into the ears and let God do what he needs to do once you've heard it. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's part of this uh, chapter in chapter 4, verses you know, 1 through 6, 1 through 5. I love that. Let me say it again. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. You know what that means? It's, it's describing exactly what we're going through right now. People don't want to hear sound doctrine because it stops them from feeling free to do wrong. I love what that's, that's telling us, but uh, they want to do things according to their own desires because they have itching ears. Don't you love that term, itching ears? They will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Does that sound like what's happening today? I think it does. People want to hear what they want to hear that confirms what they want to do, even though it's not truth and it's not what God wants them to do. Timothy needed to keep focus on the word of God because man by his natural instincts does not want God's revelation and what's going on. He would rather hear what he wants to hear, something to scratch in those itching ears. Uh, People generally want to hear what pleases them not what pleases God. Uh, Commentator Clark on Itching Ears said this. It's really kind of fascinating. Endless curiosity and insatiable desire of variety, and they get their ears tickled with the language and accent of the person abandoning the good and faithful preacher for the fine speaker. You see, they're, they're drawn in by that fine speaker that may or may not hold the truth of God. You want to make sure you stay solid to the truth of God. You can preach from the same scripture over and over every day and God will help apply it in a different way to our hearts. That's the unique thing about the scripture. I can read the same scripture over and over and yet I can apply it to my heart. God helps to uh, help me understand how that will impact me. Even if I read the same scripture every day, something new happens for me in that. Other people leave the Word of God. Uh, Once people, they leave the Word of God, they often then embrace these fantastic fantasies. Uh, When we reject God's truth, it isn't that we believe in nothing, it's that we believe in everything and anything. That's pretty scary when you think about it. This is when right becomes wrong and wrong is seen as right. It feels very much like we are in that time and space right where we are right now. Think about this, the fable that you must earn your way to God. Not true. It's a free gift. The fable that God only loves you when you're good. Hey, we're never good to begin with, so how can you become good? You have to submit to the Lord, confess your sins, uh, and become the person he wants you to become, knowing full well, as he does, that Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in the Lord, even though I don't do right all the time. My desire is to try to do right, and I fight against that battle all the time, but the Lord helps me in it. Then the fable that you should walk around thinking of yourself as better than others because you're a Christian. How much further could it be from the truth? I'm just forgiven. You know, I'm not perfect. Uh, I'm forgiven. And the Lord helps me to understand that that I'm a part of the kingdom because he forgave the sins that I have on the cross. I love that. The more determined men become to despise the teachings of Christ, the more zealous 
God's ministers should become to share the word of God and strengthen their efforts to preserve it. That's from Calvin. That's what he said, and I like it. As some of today's leaders make a strong effort to eliminate Christians and their influence, and we're seeing that across the United States right now, uh, it's more and more important that preachers speak the truth of God's word more loudly and fervently. We have to be powerful speaking God's word in powerful ways and not shrink at times that it might be tough. So I really encourage folks to, to think about this. Pray for your preachers. Pray for those who share the word because it is a tough time to preach the word, but it's the right time to preach the word. Every good shepherd has his eyes open watching for the bear and the lion that's out to kill the sheep. You see, the burden that is borne by preachers is not only preaching the word, but being in a position to be able to protect the sheep and to help them understand what they're going through. So what do we learn from Paul in this section of scripture? What does it mean? Very simply, preach the word in season and out all the time, in other words, don't deviate from the word. You can use your examples to amplify the word, but never get off into fantasy land. Stay to the truth of what God is teaching us through the power of God's word. For Timothy and every preacher to follow, don't let fear, unbelief, the cares of the world, the fears of man, criticism and discouragement, or sin weaken you. Preach the truth of the Lord, and he will come through every time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just love you and thank you so much for your blessings and, and for how you take the word and amplify it to our hearts and help the hearers of the word uh, take and make it powerful as we live out your gospel in our lives, in our everyday lives today. May the words that come that every member, a minister, which is basically what Paul is saying, every member has a place in the kingdom to share the word and to preach the word. We must be knowers of the word and doers of the word and hearers of the word. Lord, may we hear well, may we do well, may we be the kind of people you want and may your preachers who do it all the time, Lord, have an extra sense of your presence and your peace and your power. In your precious name we pray, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, what a great, powerful thing to think about, you know, preach the word because it is a big deal. And uh, next week, we're going to be in a different section, uh, a legacy leaving. How do you leave a legacy? We're going to hear from Paul on that and what he tells Timothy about it. Uh, don't forget, uh, you can catch us on YouTube. You can catch us on Facebook. You can catch us online at our website, peopleschurch.org. A lot of ways to stay connected. So whether we're online or on campus, whenever that time comes or is here, uh, we can't wait to spend time with you online and wherever you are. May God bless you during this time and may God make his spirit and his face to shine upon you in your, his precious name we pray, amen. Great to be with you. Take care.